the amazing American Museum of Natural History. One of the largest museums in the world, located in New York City. As one of New York's most beloved and top museums, the American Museum of Natural History is equal parts fun and educational. Attracting millions of visitors every year, the American Museum of Natural History is one of the largest museums in the world. It's located on the west side of Central Park, so it's easy to build into a larger itinerary, too. It includes more than 40 different permanent exhibition halls, and explores extensive subjects in the planetary, geological, biological, and anthropological sciences. Theodore Roosevelt, 1858-1919, is often considered the first modern U.S. president because he expanded the power of the office in ways that continue to this day. Now open in the Akeley Gallery, on the museum's second floor, the equestrian statue of Theodore Roosevelt was commissioned in 1925 to stand on the steps of the museum, on city-owned property. It was unveiled to the public in 1940, as part of a larger New York State memorial to former NY Governor and U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. The statue was meant to celebrate Theodore Roosevelt, 1858-1919, as a devoted naturalist and author of works on natural history. Roosevelt's father was one of the museum's founders, and the museum is proud of its historic association with the Roosevelt family. At the same time, the statue itself communicates a racial hierarchy that the museum and members of the public have long found disturbing. What is the meaning of this statue? And how should we view this historic sculpture today? The popular annual seasonal exhibition is back with more than 500 free-flying butterflies amid lush tropical plants. Butterflies and moths make up a large group of insects known as the order Lepidoptera. The name from the Greek Lepido, scale, and Ptera, wings refers to a prominent feature of adult butterflies, moths, and the tiny scales that cover the wings and the rest of the body. There are more than 250,000 known species of Lepidoptera of which about 18,000 are butterflies. Based on their anatomy, butterflies are classified into five families. This exhibition features butterflies from three of the families, the Pyridae, Pieridae, commonly known as whites and sulfurs, the Papillionidae, or swallowtails, and the Nymphalidae, which includes morphos, long wings, and others. Adult butterflies are wonderfully diverse in shape, size, and color. Active during the day, they live almost everywhere around the world, from Arctic tundra to tropical rainforests. There is a timed entry daily to this exhibit, every quarter hour from 10.15 am to 5 pm. How did T. rex evolve to become the most fearsome carnivore of the Mesozoic? T. rex, the ultimate predator exhibit will introduce you to the entire Tyrannosaur superfamily and reveal the amazing story of the most iconic dinosaur in the world through stunning life-sized models, fossils, and casts, and engaging interactives for all ages, as well as an immersive multiplayer virtual reality experience for visitors ages 12 and up. Warning: You may never think of T-Rex the same way again. How did a fluffy little critter turn into a massive killing machine? Every terrifying T-Rex was once a helpless hatchling. And all Tyrannosaurs evolved from smaller ancestors some little bigger than this one as adults. The full Tyrannosaur story spans 100 million years of evolution and includes dozens of species discovered around the world including T-Rex, uncovered in Montana in 1905 by American Museum of Natural History fossil hunter Barnum Brown. New research on this powerful hunter's senses show that its keen vision, smell, and hearing made it very hard for prey to avoid detection. Explore how scientists use brain casts and observed behaviors of living T-Rex relatives birds and alligators to learn more about how T-Rex navigated its environment. Embark on a global odyssey to discover the largest and least explored habitat on Earth. New ocean science and technology has allowed humans to go farther into the unknown than ever thought possible. 
From the coastal shallows to deeper, more mysterious worlds, this film reveals the untold stories of the ocean's most astonishing animals. The Blue Planet screens daily in 2D or 3D. Although brown bears don't mingle much, these two have gathered at a stream near Canoe Bay, Alaska, lured by the first fish of the salmon run. The millions of salmon that swim upstream each summer are a huge boon for bears, helping them regain body mass after winter hibernation. Thanks to nutrient-rich salmon, brown bears on the Alaska Peninsula coast and islands are the largest terrestrial carnivores today. Brown bears that live inland, such as the grizzly bears behind you, eat mainly plants and can be half the size. Brown bears near the Gulf of Alaska reach huge sizes because of their nourishing salmon diet. Together, brown bears and salmon help support the riverside ecosystems they share. Each summer, throngs of fish swim upriver, migrating from the ocean to reproduce in the same stream or lake where they were born. Carnivores like brown bears, river otters and eagles eat the spawning salmon. The carnivore droppings and fish carcasses transfer a tremendous amount of nutrients to plants and invertebrates, enriching the entire ecosystem. In fact, the blue whale is the biggest animal ever known to have existed. It's even bigger than the enormous dinosaurs that lived over 65 million years ago. This colossal species uses plates of baleen in its mouth to filter huge numbers of tiny prey, including small crustaceans called krill. Blue whales migrate long distances, traveling alone or in small groups called pods. They breed in warm southern waters during the winter and feed in polar seas during the spring and summer. The museum's iconic blue whale model, first constructed in the mid-1960s, was based on photographs of a female blue whale found dead in 1925 off the southern tip of South America. At the time, little was known about blue whales in their natural habitats. By 2001, museum artists working on the renovation of the 94-foot-long model had many more images and live footage of blue whales. They flattened the model's once overly bulging eyes, corrected the blowholes, and tapered the tail. They also added a belly button which visitors can find about four-fifths of the way down the model's body, a reminder of just one of the traits humans share with this majestic mammal. At 21,000 pounds of foam and fiberglass, how does the model stay up? It's suspended by a single steel pipe, connected to structures hidden in both the model and the ceiling. Each year, the blue whale model receives a thorough scrub. What does it take to clean this massive exhibit? Three days, an electric lift, an industrial vacuum cleaner, and strong arms. At 63 feet long, the Seaworthy Great Canoe is one of the museum's most popular artifacts. Carved in the 1870s from the trunk of a single cedar tree, the canoe features design elements from different Native American peoples of the northwest coast, notably Haida and Hyaltsuk. The magnificent killer whale depicted on either side of the prow of the Great Canoe was most likely painted by Charles Edenshaw, 1839-1924 one of the most influential Haida artists of his time, known for his wood carving, jewelry, and painting. The museum's great standing skeleton is Mammothus, the mammoth. Found in Indiana, this mammoth lived about 11,000 years ago. Mammoths were larger than their relatives the woolly mammoths but lacked their long, coarse hair. The case at the base of the mammoth holds the mummified remains of Effie, a baby woolly mammoth found in an open pit gold mine in Alaska in 1948. After Effie died about 21,000 years ago, its remains were preserved in the frozen ground. Rapa Nui, Easter Island, is famous for its rows of moai, towering figures of deified ancestors that were carved from volcanic tuff rock in quarries, then moved to a platform on the water's edge. This plaster cast was made from a mold secured during a 1934-1935 museum expedition to Rapa Nui, 2,000 miles west of the Chilean coast. There are 887 moai on Rapa Nui, where they are revered, even considered by some Icelanders to be sacred. 
Since the museum's Moai cast was featured in the movie Night at the Museum, it has become a popular exhibit. In January 2016, the museum added another must-see exhibit to its world-famous fossil halls, a cast of a 122-foot-long dinosaur. At the time, the species was so new, that it had not yet been formally named by the paleontologists who discovered it. The scientific name, Patagotitan Mayorum, was announced in August 2017. The moniker was inspired by the region where this new species was discovered, Argentina's Patagonia. The Titanosaur cast grazes the gallery's approximately 19-foot high ceilings, and, at 122 feet, is just a bit too long for its home. Instead, its neck and head extend out towards the elevator banks, welcoming visitors to the dinosaur floor. Paleontologists suggest that Patagotitan mayorum, a giant herbivore that belongs to a group known as Titanosaurs, weighed in at around 70 tons. The species lived in the forests of today's Patagonia about 95 to 100 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, and is one of the largest dinosaurs ever discovered. The Willamette meteorite weighs 15.5 tons. This iron meteorite, which was found in Oregon, is the largest ever found in the United States and the sixth largest in the world. The smooth surface melted during its blazing entry into the atmosphere, while the pits formed on the Earth's surface. Iron meteorites form when large enough asteroids have had molten interiors catastrophically collide with other asteroids. These huge collisions blast out material from the molten iron core of the asteroid on orbits that reach Earth after millions of years. The remains were excavated in the Patagonian desert region of Argentina by a team from the Museo Paleontológico Egidio Ferruglio led by José Luis Carbol Lido and Diego Paul, who received his PhD degree in a joint program between Columbia University and the American Museum of Natural History. Thousands of years ago, this meteorite, traveling some 64,000 km per hour, crashed into Earth's surface. Over many centuries, Rainwater interacting with its iron sulfide deposits produced sulfuric acid, which slowly edged and carved large cavities. The Willamette meteorite was originally located within the upper Willamette Valley of Oregon, near the present-day city of Portland. 